Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Greetings everyone, welcome to our teleconference. Today we want to give God thanks and we want to give God praise for His goodness, for His mercy and for His grace. It's wonderful to know the Lord and it's wonderful to serve the Lord. Truly the Lord is good, truly the Lord is great. Truly the Lord is greatly to be praised in the beauty of holiness in the mountain of our God. And we give Him thanks always for everything we give god thanks for the breath we breathe we give god thanks for the water we consume and everything else so much things we're going to give god thanks for the light of day and so many wonderful things that god has done for us and what god means to us so we give god glory and we give god praise god bless you we're going to do a topic today is Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. It's really good and wonderful when we have, when we wait upon the Lord, when we use patient, when we have that thing called patiently wait. When we ask God for something and we wait until He answers. We wait until He delivers until we wait until he grant unto us that which we ask of him so we want to look at purpose for waiting purpose the need for waiting and what waiting can do for us so before i start i we're going to start from psalms 27 with a few psalms and just look at those who have waited upon the Lord and what God has done for those who have trusted in Him. But before I do, let us have a short prayer. Father, we thank You. Father, we praise You. Father, we glorify You. Thank You for this moment, Lord, that we are able to come together to look into Your Word, a new Word of wisdom, Word of knowledge, Word of understanding, which we need to make it through. Lord, we pray you will inspire us with your word and give us a heart of exception to accept your word. Lord, we glorify you and we thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to look at um, Psalm 27, a Psalm of David. And we just want to look at this man, David, who love God. There's no doubt about it. David loved God with a great love. And he never stopped to meditate on the goodness of God. And so we should also be always meditate upon the goodness of God and give him thanks for what he has done for us. So Psalm 27, a very famous Psalms. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an whole should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should be risen up against me, in this will I be confident. Wanting have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle he shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. 
Now shall my head be lifted up among my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in this tabernacle sacrifice of joy. I will sing praise, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. For false witnesses has risen up against me such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That 14 verse, David says, wait on the Lord. David said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. So we want to look at the sentiment of David. David was the second king of Israel because God had, when the children of Israel cried unto God for a king, Samuel was God's messenger. They rejected Samuel. And they said to Samuel, we want our own king. And Samuel told, told God that the children of Israel want their own king. So God says, all right, so shall it be. So God gave Saul anointed Saul, told Samuel to anoint Saul to be the king of Israel and gave Saul commandments. Saul disobeyed, so God rejected him. Saul, God rejected Saul and then God found a man who God says was a man after his own heart of the children of Jesse. He found a man whom he could use. He found a man who he could influence, who would be obedient, who would be humble, who would have all the characteristic a man of God should have. David had it, and God knew it. So after God rejected Saul, he told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse and anoint him, anoint him a man in the house of Jesse. Now Jesse had many sons, and when Jesse heard that Samuel was coming to anoint his sons, to anoint one of his sons to be king of Israel, Jesse took all the, the, the all the best of the best of his children put them before Samuel and leave one out in the field to look after sheep, to look after the flock. Because God don't see things like we see things. Jesse thought, these are my men. They are all of good statues. They're tall. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they, look, they look the type. But you see, the thing is that God do not look, God do not look upon the outward appearance of man. God look upon the heart. And so God look upon the heart of David, though he was a little shepherd boy, but God knew he had a good heart. 
God knew he had a humble heart. God knew he had a righteous heart. And so God, when all the children of Israel came, when all the children of um, Jesse came to be anointed, Samuel says, none of these, because the Spirit of God tell him, no, none of these, all those six children that came, none of these. So Samuel said to Jesse, do you have any more children? And Jesse said, yes, there's one out in the field looking after the sheep. And Samuel says, I will not take my seat until you bring him hither. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. See how God sits high and look low. And then they sent and bring David out in the field, the least in the eyes of Jesse. The, le the most insignificant son that he had. And when he came, the Spirit of God said to Samuel, This is him. Anoint him. Glory be to God. Can you imagine how Samuel must have felt? Because he knew that God can't be wrong. God has got his man. On every time, in every situation, every occasion, God has his man. So here David um, uh, showing appreciation to God. Because even though Samuel anointed him king, Samuel anointed David king, that was where his trouble began. Sometime when we are blessed by God, this is where our trouble began. Hallelujah. You would think it would be otherwise. But the things that David went through, because he was appointed to be king over Saul, the things that Saul tried to do to kill David. But you know God was good? Because God gave Saul's son, Jonathan, God put love in the heart of Jonathan towards David. Oh, praise God. And many times Saul wanted to destroy David. And because God put that love in the heart of Jonathan, Saul's son, he was able to escape. Because Jonathan knew all the secrets. And so he passed it on to David so David could escape. So David says, after all he's been through, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? We can only say that because of experience with God. No one can say the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear without an experience with God? Without God doing something special for you. And so... God did some special things for David. Delivered him out of the hand of Saul. Saul was the king. He had the power. He could speak the word and David would be a dead man. Because he did not like the idea that the people of Israel was in favor of David. When they went out to battle, Saul and David, the children of Israel said, yes. Saul has killed his thousand, David has killed his ten thousand. And when Saul heard those words, he knew the people was for David because God was for David and not for Saul because of his disobedience. So David says, The Lord is my strength. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my life, the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That is confidential. Confident. In God. He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though when the wicked, you know, we can't get away, once we're in this world, we can't get away from wickedness. 
Wickedness is all around us. Wicked people is all around us. People who despise and hate us because of we following and we serving God, they're all around us. David says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came up to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. You know, I just love the way David speaks in the Psalms. I just love the way he had the confidence in God. That he trusted God. That he had, it was not, there was no wavering. There was no doubt. There was no fear. Because he knew God. He said, though an host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should be risen up against me, in this will I be confident. Confident. The Bible says, cast not away your confident. confidence because it has a great recompense of a reward. Confident. David says, though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. Confident. When you have confidence, you know everything is going to be all right. When we're waiting upon God, and we trusted in Him, and we are leaning upon Him, everything is going to be all right. Now He says, now, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Just one thing. Just one thing. Sometimes we want so many things, so many things of the Lord. We want everything that we see, everything, I mean, lots of us, we want everything. We just want things, everything that we, our eyes are drawn to. Yes, we would like to have that, the desire. But David, because he loved God so much, because he wanted to serve God so much, he said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. He says, one thing I'm asking of the Lord, that, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Oh, that is awesome. The sentiment that David had in these verses is just awesome. So many things we desire. But to be in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that's the one thing. David wasn't asking for house and land. David wasn't asking for treasures of the of this world, gold and silver, and all the precious stones. He wasn't asking for that. He says one thing, one thing. And then, as it bear to mind, I remember when S Solomon was king of Israel, and God appeared unto Solomon. And God says, what will you have? One wish that God asked Solomon, what will you have? And Solomon says, Lord, give me wisdom and understanding. One thing, Solomon loved God. One thing, Solomon built the temple. He loved God. One thing. And so it went on to say, for in the verse 5, in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle he shall hide me. 
He shall set me upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. In the time of trouble, as long as we are in this world, trouble will come. As long as we are in this world, we, it cannot be avoided. It may come one way, it may come another way, but trouble will come. As long as we are in this body, this flesh, trouble will come. Everyone's got their trouble. No one is free from trouble. But that David says in the time of, know that the time of trouble will come. He knew the time of trouble will come and he's been through so many trouble. If we read the story of David, the amount of trouble he went through. They tried to, his own son, David's own son, tried to kill him, Absalom. And I read in a page that David, being king of Israel, ran away from his son. And he had to run away barefooted, imagine, upon the mountain to escape his son. So trouble came for David in many ways, in many forms. And so we must know that in with us, trouble time will come. But he says, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me. He shall set my feet upon a rock. And now will my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle, in his presence, sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. You know how wonderful it is when we can sing praises unto the Lord. There's nothing better but we can sing praises unto the Lord. One, therefore will I offer in his tabernacle when I go into the house of the Lord sacrifices of joy. I will sing praises. I will sing praises unto the Lord. Then he says in verse 7, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me, and answer me when thou sayest seek he my face my heart says thy face lord will i seek when the lord says seek he my face my heart everything is from the heart worship is from the heart praises is from the heart. Thanksgiving is from the heart. Worship is from the heart. Everything is from the heart. David says, when thou say, seek ye my face, my heart. So, so he's talking from his heart. My heart said, thy face, Lord, will I seek. And then, he says, hide not thy face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Be thou hast been my help. Leave me, neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my, mother, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of thy mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. False witnesses has risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted, unless I had believed in the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. All these things come upon David. All the trouble, all his enemies want to eat up his flesh. His enemies want to destroy him. 
want to make him, you know, just sieve him out and destroy him completely. And he says, I had fainted unless I believe. So David had the faith that God was with him. And because he knew that God was with him, even though he went through so many trials, so many dangers, the songwriter says, through many dangers, toils and snares, thou, I have already come. David went through so many danger, toils and snares. If we read the story of David, from the time that Samuel anointed him king, the things that David went through, it was painful. It was sad. But you know God bought him out. You know God bought him out because he trusted in the Lord. God bought him out. And in conclusion in this psalm, he says, wait on the Lord. He advised us through what he's been through, through what God has done for him, through the oppression and the persecution of the enemy and how he trusted in the Lord and had faith in God. He concluded in this psalm, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait on the Lord. I say, wait. Wait. I don't mind waiting. I don't want mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Job said, I will wait until my change come. I don't mind waiting until my change come. As long as I'm waiting on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. Because there's always something that we need from God. In Psalm 40, David, David writes again. Psalms 40, David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined his ear unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit and out of a merry clay and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. He has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord. Wait patiently for the Lord. We need to be patient. Whatever it is that we ask the Lord for. Believe that he heard. David said, I wait patiently for the Lord. He inclined his ear. He inclined unto me and heard my cry. And brought me up out of a horrible pit. What, what is a horrible pit? How is a horrible pit? Who can stay in a horrible pit and out of the mary clay? The mary clay. You, you can't come out of it. It's drawing you down. It's pulling you down. But he said they brought me up out of the horrible pit and out of the mary clay and set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. He put a new song in my mouth and the song is even praises unto our God. When God does something for us, let us thank him. Let us praise him. And don't be afraid to ask, make our petition to God. God wants us to make our petition to him. God wants us to prove his power. God wants us to prove his might. God wants us to see his power of deliverance. When Lazarus was sick, Jesus could have gone there and healed him before he died. 
No. But Jesus wanted him to die. How is it? Because unless Lazarus died, the people would not have seen that Jesus had the power to raise the dead. So God wants us to prove what he can do. Don't be shy. Don't hesitate. Make your petition to the Lord today. Whatever it is need. And I think, I think we all have a need. I can't think of anyone in this world who don't have a need. No one. No man in this world. Living man. Have is without a need. But God wants us to bring it before him, talk to him, prove his power and his greatness. In Isaiah chapter 40, now let's look at Psalm, Psalm 25 verse 1. Psalm 25 verse 1 to 5. And this is another Psalm of David. Unto Psalm 25, it says, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let mine enemies triumph. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Those are clear statements that, that David is making to God. Clear statement. Unto thee, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Those are clear statements God David is making to God. It's just like I'm talking to you. And so David is talking to God. Because he knew God. He knew what God could do. And then he went on to say, Let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let no one, let no woman, let no child, no one that wait on you, let them not be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without a cause. The evil ones. Let them be ashamed. But let none that call upon you. Let none that seek you. This is David talking to God with that intercessory prayer. Let none of them that wait upon you be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without a cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy path and lead me in thy truth and teach me. Those are words of trust and confidence. Thou art the God of my salvation. In thee, on thee, do I wait all day. On thee, do I wait? Wait upon the Lord. God cannot be late. He is an on time God. We are always we, we are always trying to be on time. And many times we are late. But God cannot be late. He's always on time. He's always on time. And so it says, on thee do I wait all day. I wait upon the Lord all day. I wait upon the Lord from morning till night. I wait upon the Lord all day. I'm looking to the Lord always. And I look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40, chapter 40 verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, They, but they, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run 
and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, glory be to God. See, there's great power in waiting. There is great power in waiting. Isaiah the prophet, who God called, and who God revealed the coming of Christ, the wonderful prophet of God, he concluded in this chapter, verse 40, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. In other words, if you're weak and you're waiting upon God, you will be strong. You will have renewed strength. And you shall mount up with wings as eagles. You know, see the power of an eagle. An eagle is a bird that is very, very powerful, unusually powerful. An eagle can manage more than maybe their weight, lifting their maybe twice their weight. It's a powerful creature. The wings of the eagles is, is great. It mounts up, it moves up, it soars above every other bird with power. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, waiting upon the Lord. They shall run. Imagine running. See, the Olympics people are running. Who's the fastest? Who can endure the longest? They shall run and not be weary. Imagine being able to run and not getting tired. Imagine you can just keep running. You can just keep running and you will not get tired. That's the power of waiting upon the Lord. They shall walk and not faint. You could walk a hundred miles and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. There is power in waiting. There's power in waiting upon the Lord. So whatever it is we ask the Lord for, wait upon Him. Sometimes we have to keep asking Him. Sometimes we have to keep praying Maybe sometimes we pray over the same thing, over and over. Maybe God wants us to just keep seeking Him. But God will come on time. God cannot be late. God has eternity. There's no time in eternity. So God cannot be late. Hallelujah. So, in concluding... There was a time when Daniel, the prophet Daniel, seek God and prayed to God for a revelation. In Daniel chapter 10, we see Daniel prayed and just kept praying. Just kept praying. And in Daniel chapter 10, there was an angel appeared unto Daniel and said, and he said, Behold, a hand touched me. Daniel said, Behold, a hand touched me and set me upon my knees and upon the palm of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, Shako, Understand the word that I speak unto thee and understand and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word, he said unto me, I stood trembling. Daniel was seeking the face of God. Daniel was the one who was put in the lion's den and God deliver him 
and he kept seeking God and he prayed unto God and nothing happened but it says God heard his prayer so the angel said unto him then said he unto me fear not Daniel for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God thy God thy words were heard and I am come for thy words sometimes when we call upon God it seems like nothing is happening but the angel said to Daniel from the first time first day from the first time we start to ask God for anything set our heart towards the God asking God making a petition and he says chasing thyself before the Lord thy words were heard and I am come for thy words but the prince of the kingdom of Persia which stood me one and twenty days but lo Michael one of the chief princes came to help me and I remained there with the king of Persia now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days for yet the vision is for many days so this was an instant of Daniel that man of God who trusted in God who was willing to pray to God under all circumstances even though he was threatened to be thrown in the he was thrown in the lion's den but he set his face to seek God he had a complete relationship with God and he prayed to God but a prayer was not answered and so the angel said Daniel a man greatly beloved understand the word that I speak unto thee stand upright he was on his knees he was praying to God the angel said stand upright now the answer is here when we have prayed the Bible says having done all stand stand with your loins girded and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel Daniel did all he called upon God and from the day first day he made his prayer to God his prayer was heard. God heard his prayer from the time we open our mouth to God making a, a, peti a petition to him our prayers heard and he will send the help if the king of Persia which was against the, the word of God stood against that angel God have an even more mightier angel God sent a mightier angel the chief Michael, Michael the chief of the princes of the angel to deliver that message because God must word must be fulfilled and when we pray for God be sure that he hear and that he will answer wait upon the Lord I don't mind waiting let us continue to wait on the Lord wait upon the Lord be of good courage wait on the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart it is wonderful to wait upon God it is wonderful when we know the God we serve it is wonderful when we know what he can do for us it's wonderful the Bible says they let none let none that wait upon thee be ashamed we cannot be ashamed when we wait upon God we cannot we will not be disappointed when we wait upon God 
because he will not he cannot disappoint us he cannot go against his word he said call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you whatever the trouble may be he says call upon me and I will deliver you let us wait upon the Lord let us be a David let us have that confident in God that whatever the situation may be that God is able to deliver us trouble must come trouble will come trouble in this world is unavoidable it's unavoidable why because we're living in a troubled world you cannot be you can't and you can't be a fish in the sea and don't get wet that's it if you're a fish you must get wet because that's your habitat and we can't live in a troubled world without trouble but we know him who is able to deliver us from trouble and unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us spotless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy and to the only wise God the only wise God be praise, honor, dominion and power now and forevermore praise the Lord brethren let us continue the way the world is today we need Jesus now more than ever if ever time we need the Lord we need him now more than ever we will need him because the world is in trouble on every side the east and to the west I'm talking about the Middle East I'm talking about you Europe both areas are on fire and it's not going to get any better so we need Jesus the violence that's engulfed the world it's not just in the UK but I heard they said that the London has become more um, dangerous than New York and New York has a reputation of being a very dangerous city but it is said now that London is more dangerous than New York can you see the time that we are in don't need to be negative but we need to be realistic we are children of God the disciples came to Jesus and asked him what is the sign of thy coming and the end of the world we have to ask questions what is the sign of the coming of the Lord and the end of the world we're living in the world we have to ask questions but it is all written for us perilous times shall come some of the things that is going on around us we don't even hear about them we don't hear about them we, they're not on the news but we are if we look through our spiritual eyes we will see clearly that we are in perilous times and we just have to face that reality and we just have to cling to Jesus build up our confidence in him leaning continually upon him the days are near are ending time is coming to an end so let us continue to wait upon the Lord I don't mind waiting we should not mind waiting let us wait upon the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen our heart God bless you my brethren we have come to the end of the teleconference God bless you and um, sister McLean God bless you glad to have you with us and um, I would like you to share a little word for us before I close and God bless you Pastor Winston 
and PT and Sister Rose, Brother. Sister Brina. God bless you. Share a thought with us, um, Sister McLean. It's always good to hear your encouraging yeah, word. Minister, come to you. I've covered every area of this message. He doesn't want to look you more. All they have to say is just amen. Because it was talking about David. David believed in God and he trusted in God. And he also, in you know, Psalms 125, and he said, They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed but abide it forever. And as the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is around about his people from henceforth even forever. You know, I just want to say God is good. Mm. And we have to just continue to just trust in him, believe in him. Confidence in that whatever he says, he will do, he will do it. And just let us keep our eyes focused on the Lord because as you are saying, the coming of the Lord is near. We can see the signs of the time. We don't need no preacher to preach to us to tell us. We can see for ourselves, what spiritual eyes we can see, that the time is uh, time is winding out, and destruction is on the land. But you know, God has a plan, and we know we are in God's plan, because the thought that he has for us is good, and not of evil mm. to give us an expected end. And we as believers, as Christians, we need we need to buckle up. We need to put on our seat belts because the flight can be any time. Mm -hmm. It can be any time. Sometimes when you when you leave home, um, especially the time that we are in to know, we can just leave with home all right, not feeling we're feeling well and everything and go out there and we just go out there and there's an accident, mm -hmm. something happened. You know, you don't have to trouble anybody now because as they look at anybody too hard, they steer on you and I'm telling you, mm -hmm. the people around us now, they are crazy. Mm -hmm. And we just have to just cover ourselves under the blood of Jesus and be serious. Now it's not time for us now to play church. Now it's time for us to get radical mm -hmm. in God mm -hmm. and put on the whole armor. You know, because we are in trying times. Mm -hmm. There are trials and temptation, even in, 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 in your house, beside you, yes. your neighbor, your children, maybe your wife, maybe your husband, a friend. No, they are testing your faith, but let us anchor our soul in that heaven of rest. And though our ship may be battered, let us stay in the ship. Paul did say to his crew, his fellow men, stay on board. Mm -hmm. The ship may be broken, but the angel spoke to me last night. No, no one will hurt. Yes. So, virgin, though the ship may be rocking and the sails may be torn, mm -hmm. let us stay on board. Because as I heard you said, Minister Danson, you don't mind waiting. Mm. I too don't mind waiting on the Lord because you know what? He is a covenant-keeping God. He is not a God that he can lie. If I tell you something this morning, last week, Sunday, Tanya had was to come home from work because I had was to call her because of an incident. And she didn't get back to work. And today she went back to work. She'll have to go to work today. And, and I said, Lord of mercy, and I was praying. I was praying because I know the enemy are really fighting. When I tell you now, I have to be at 9 24. Sometimes I can't even pray. Sometimes I'm just, just talking to the Lord. Just talk like I would talk to any, mm -hmm. anyone. And I um, kneeled down and I prayed. And and I asked God, I said, God, cover this house. Cover this Amen. house. Amen. From the entrance at work to the passage, the bathroom, mm -hmm. the kitchen, everywhere cover this house under your blood today. Because Tanya won't be coming from work again. I said, God, the enemy said, so the enemy must hold in peace because I said that the enemy is me, is me the target, you know, me is the one, you mm -hmm. know, me is the problem. 
I don't know what it is, but the devil don't like me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Don't like me either. But I'm telling you, and I pray and believe me, I, I keep pleading the blood, just a plead the blood, I say the blood of Jesus mm. is against every witch spirit, every spirit of contention, every spirit that is not of God. Yes. The blood of Jesus speak against you, mm. devil, and the blood of Jesus speak for me and my behalf. And I've been just pleading the blood, and I don't, I didn't pray out loud this morning. I just pray silent. Silent prayer. And let me tell you today, today is one of the calmest days. Amen. Um, it was a calm day. So we just have to just trust God, you know, and just be rooted, be grounded, mm -hmm. and be steadfast and stable. And just when we ask our friends, we just believe and keep on trusting God because yes. you know what? Who cannot lie and hold on to God's word? His word is a lamp unto our path and a light to our direction. May the light direct us and be the signs of the time that we are into brethren. We have to draw closer and closer each day. And so, Brother Thomas, you have covered everything already. Wait upon the Lord, be of good courage. And, you know, and so we have to just wait on the Lord. Yes. Don't go before. Let him lead and we follow. And ask him for a discerning spirit, discerning mm -hmm. eyes that mm -hmm. we can discern between good and evil. Even when we are on the bus, when we are out, we can know who we are sitting beside, yes, who yes. we are standing beside, who we are who we are looking at. Mm -hmm. Give us the give us double visions. You know, that's what we need. It's last days because yes. the enemy is out, the plague is out, the sword is out, there's a spirit that is out, and let us hold fast and let us love each other and pray one for another and cling to each yes, other. Yes, yes. You know, and lift up each other in love and in peace. Don't let, let us not do tear down anyone and be judgmental. That's right. Because sometimes you don't know what one is going through, mm -hmm. you know? And all you have to do, just pray, or maybe if you can give that person a phone call or, or a voice note, help you don't know how much that means to a person. Of course, I mean, of me, course. When someone give me a voice note, even if they don't have to call me, mm -hmm. but see, so how you're doing? I feel revived, I feel, I Amen. feel good, you know. So that's... Uh, the whole of the whole duty of us is to do love one yes, another yes. and be on one accord, you know. For well, God love God is love, so let us keep the fire burning always and our garments white at all times. So this is my few words. So I would just want to greet you, Brother Thompson. Sorry I didn't greet you. That's the fine, my God bless you. I just Mark. want to greet you, Minister Thompson, Sister Rose, and Pastor McKenna, and all the yes, others there. that is on this platform yes. this evening. The Lord bless you all, and we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And let us keep sweet and keep the fire burning, and let our light keep shining in the darkness that the that the who are in the darkness can see mm -hmm. that there is a light and ask what that light means and we can give uh, the meaning of the light and what it is for god bless you and god keep you all these are what i have to say in jesus name. amen thank you my dear sister mclean god bless you for your words of encouragement you know pray to god that you know god is with you and can continue to be with you and surround you with his love and his grace, you know, God is good. And um, we, we just keep waiting on the Lord. We have to just keep waiting on the Lord because we are in some perilous times. And But we know that God is in control. That's the good thing about it. We don't have to be fearful. We don't no. need to be fearful. 